One day, Maryam السلام, was praying in the temple. Suddenly, an angel appeared in the form of a man before her and said, I am a messenger from your Lord, and I am here to announce to you the gift of a righteous son. To this, Maryam السلام, replied, How can I have a son when no man has touched me? The angel said that it is very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He also added that God wanted to appoint her son as a sign to mankind and a mercy from Allah. The angel's visit caused her great anxiety, which increased as the months went by. How could she face giving birth to a child without having a husband? Later, she felt life kicking inside her. With a heavy heart, she left the temple and went to Nazareth, the city in which she had been born. She settled in a simple farmhouse to avoid the public. But fear and anxiety did not leave her. After some months, she could not bear the mental strain any longer. Burdened with a heavy womb, she left Nazareth, not knowing where to go. She had not gone far when she was overtaken by the pain of childbirth. She sat down against a dry palm tree, and here she gave birth to a son. Looking at her beautiful baby, she was hurt that she had brought him into the world without a father. Suddenly, she heard a voice nearby. Grieve not, your Lord has placed a rivulet below. And shake the trunk of this tree, from which ripe dates will fall. So eat and drink, and regain the strength you have lost. And be of good cheer, for what you see is the power of Allah. For a while, she was comforted by Allah's miracle, for it was a sure sign of her innocence and purity. She decided to return to the city. However, her fears also returned. What was she going to tell the people? As if sharing his mother's worry, the baby began to speak. If you meet any person, say, I have vowed to fast and may not speak to any human today. Maryam السلام, was stunned to hear her newborn speak. With this miracle, she felt at ease. As she had expected, her arrival in the city with a newborn baby in her arms aroused the curiosity of the people. They scolded her. This is a terrible sin that you have committed. She put her finger to her lips and pointed to the child. They asked, How can we speak to a newborn baby? To their total amazement, the child began to speak clearly. I am Allah's servant. Allah has given me the book and made me a prophet. He has blessed me wherever I may be. Peace unto me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. The people were shocked. They realized that the baby was unique. For if Allah wills something, he merely says, be, and it happens. But the Jewish priest felt this child was dangerous, for they felt that the people would turn their worship to Allah, displacing the existing Jewish tenets. They feared they would lose their authority over the people. Therefore, they kept the miracle of Isa's speech in infancy a secret and accused Maryam السلام, of great misdeeds. As Isa السلام, grew, the signs of prophethood began to increase as well. 
He could tell his friends what kind of supper waited for them at home, and what they had hidden and where. Once, when he was twelve, he accompanied his mother to Jerusalem. There, he wandered into the temple and joined the crowd listening to the lectures of the rabbis. The audience were all adults, but he was not afraid to sit with them. After listening intently, he asked questions and expressed his opinion. The learned rabbis were disturbed by the boy's boldness and puzzled by the questions he asked, for they were unable to answer him. Prophet Isa alayhi salam grew up to manhood. It was Sabbath, a day of complete rest. No fire could be lit nor extinguished, nor could females plait with their hair. Prophet Musa alayhi salam had commanded that Saturday be dedicated to the worship of Allah. However, the wisdom behind the Sabbath and its spirit had gone. They made a hundred things unlawful on Saturday, even calling a doctor to save a patient. One Sabbath day, the Prophet was on his way to the temple. Although it was Sabbath, he reached out his hand to pick fruit to feed a hungry child. This was considered to be a violation of Sabbath law. He made a fire for the old women to keep themselves warm from the freezing air. This was considered as another violation. He went to the temple and looked around. There were 20,000 Jewish priests who earned their living from the temple. The Prophet observed that the visitors were much fewer than the priests. Yet the temple was full of sheep and doves which were sold to the people to be offered as sacrifice. Every step in the temple cost the visitor money. When the poor people, who could not afford the price of sheep or dove, entered the temple, they were driven away like flies. The Prophet was astonished. Why did the priests burn a lot of offerings inside the temple, while thousands of poor people were hungry outside it? On this blessed night, the two noble prophets, Yahya alayhi salam and his father, Zakariya alayhi salam, were killed by the ruling authority. It was on this night that Prophet Isa alayhi salam received the revelation. Allah the Exalted commanded him to begin his call to the children of Israel. Like an opposing force, the message of Prophet Isa alayhi salam came to denounce the practices of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Prophet's call from the beginning was marked by its complete uptightness and piety. He continued inviting the people to Almighty Allah. His teachings annoyed the priests. For every word, the Prophet was a threat to them and their position, exposing their misdeeds. The Jewish priests soon started to plot against the Prophet. They wanted to embarrass him and prove that he had come to destroy the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law provides that an adulteress be stoned to death. They brought him a Jewish adulteress and asked, Does not the law stipulate the stoning of this adulteress? The Prophet answered, Yes. Then they said, This woman is an adulteress. The Prophet looked at the woman and then at the priests. He understood their plan. He smiled and assented. Whoever among you is sinless can stone her. His voice rose in the middle of the temple, making a new law on adultery for the sinless to judge the sin. As he left the temple, the woman followed him. She took out a bottle of perfume from her garments, knelt before his feet and washed them with perfume and tears and dried his feet with her hair. 
Isa alayhi salam turned to the woman and told her to stand up. Then he said, O oh Lord, forgive her sins. The Prophet continued to pray to Allah for mercy on his people, and he was aided by divine miracles. Some Quranic commentators said that the Prophet brought four people back from the dead. When the Jews saw this, they said, You only resurrect those who have died recently. Perhaps they only fainted. They asked him to bring back to life Sam bin Nuh. When he asked them to show his grave, the people accompanied him there. Isa alayhi salam invoked Allah the Exalted to bring him back to life. And behold, Sam ibn Nuh came out from the grave. One day, Prophet Isa asked his supporters to fast for 30 days. His followers agreed, and they started fasting. Upon completion of the 30-day fasting period, the followers went along with Isa alayhi salam to the desert. It was normal for thousands of people to follow the Prophet wherever he went. Many of the followers were sick people who hoped to be cured by the Prophet. A group of people who were against the teachings of the Prophet also followed him wherever he went. They followed him so that they can mock at the Prophet and belittle him at every opportunity they got. After the 30-day fasting period, the disbelievers asked the Prophet if they could have a spread of food from the sky. They asked for this as confirmation that God had accepted their fast. They wanted to eat something special on the day they broke their fast. They also wanted the spread to be enough for all of them. There were thousands of people present there, and the disbelievers knew that the Prophet could never deliver what they asked for. Prophet Isa salam agreed to their request. He went to a silent spot and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was a miracle! God accepted the prayers of the Prophet and a huge spread of food descended right from the sky. There was one cloud below the spread and one cloud above it, and it was surrounded by angels. Slowly it came down to the ground, and as it descended, the Prophet remained immersed in his prayers. The spread of food landed near the Prophet. There was white cloth covering the spread, the Prophet took this off, saying, In the name of Allah, the best sustainer. When the cloth covering the spread was taken off, the people gathered around and looked in wonder. There were seven big fish, seven loaves of bread, vinegar, salt, honey, and many other fruits as well. The spread had a wonderful smell, the people never really smelled anything so wonderful before. The Prophet then asked the disbelievers to eat from the spread. But they replied, We will not eat from it until we see you eating from the spread. You are the ones who asked for it, the Prophet asked them. Then you should eat the food first. But the disbelievers still refused. The Prophet then asked the poor sick, handicapped, and the blind to eat from the spread. There were more than one thousand of them, and all of them ate from the spread. Then another miracle took place. All the sick people who ate from the spread got cured. Same was the case with the handicapped, the blind, and all the others. It was a miracle! The disbelievers were now sad because they had refused to eat from the spread when they were invited first. 
the news of the feast traveled fast, and it reached the city. Thousands of people traveled to witness this divine feast. The number of people who wanted to take part in this feast had now become so huge. The prophet then asked them to take turns to have this feast. Days passed. Each person, from the very first to the very last, ate until they were full. It is said that almost 7,000 people ate from the feast each day. After 40 days, God asked the prophet to allow only the poor to eat from the feast and not the rich. The prophet warned the people to be honest and asked the rich to stay away from the feast. He also asked the poor not to take away the food and save it for the next day. However, the people didn't listen to the prophet. The rich people ate from the spread, pretending to be poor, and many poor people took food with them, disobeying the prophet's orders. As a result, the spread of food was lifted back into the sky where it came from. The people talked about this miracle for many days and were convinced about Allah's miracles. Prophet Isa السلام, went on with his mission. The priests realized that if they didn't do something, then all of them would soon be jobless. They started accusing him of magic, breaking Mosaic law, and even an allegiance with the devil. When the Jews failed to stop the Prophet's call, they decided to kill him. The chief priests held secret meetings to agree on the best way of getting rid of the Prophet. The priests had no authority to pass the death sentence at the time, so they convinced the Roman governor that the Prophet was plotting against the security of the Roman Empire. They urged him to take immediate action against him. The glorious Qur'an affirms that Allah the Exalted did not permit the people of Israel to kill Jesus or crucify him. What happened was that Allah saved him from his enemies and raised him to heaven. The people of Israel mistook another man for the Prophet and they arrested and crucified him. In the meantime, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised Jesus to him to the heavens. It is believed that on the day of resurrection, Prophet Isa alayhi salam will be standing as a witness.